Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. So I'm back with another video on this new Blue Eddy uh, lithium battery. This is their model B1232. So I have uh, did one video on it where I kind of went through all the features and we hooked it up into the RV circuitry and tested it there for a while. And the last month or so I've had it in this uh, test bed. It's kind of a, a battery box that I have in my truck. And it's worked fine. I've had it, I've discharged it quite a bit and recharged it several times, no problem. <clears throat> but one of the key features of this is a self-heating capability for cold weather. It's another reason I wanted to store it out in this toolbox. You can kind of see, you know, it lives outside, but it's protected from the weather. But we got uh, temperatures down fairly cool last night. Um, I think right now the battery is showing seven Celsius. So what it does is it prevents charging of the lithium cells in there, but there are heating pads in there. So I'm just gonna turn on my charger and we should be able to see it go into a protection mode and then start drawing current to the heating pads in there. And then eventually, I think once it hits about 10 Celsius, then the regular charging will take place. Okay, so I plugged in the charger. And I'm recording the screen on the phone there. That's the Blue Eddy app. So it's starting up now. And you can see that went red there. Usually it's green, that's the power button. And on the app, we have charging protection. But we can see on this, I got a little clamp on meter. The power going into the battery is 15.6 amps. So that is go, being directed to the heating pads inside the battery to warm the lithium cells. Once the temperature gets back to 10 Celsius, then the protection will turn off and we'll get normal charging. And that system is just for charging. As far as discharging, if you're using the battery, I believe it can go down to um, minus 18 Celsius or minus 4 Fahrenheit. And so it can discharge under freezing. Okay, it's mostly the charging under the freezing mark that they, they want to try to uh, not happen. So that's why they have the heating in there. Actually, I was wrong about 15 amps. Didn't have my clamp meter quite on there right, and it's actually showing 20 amps. Let's have a look at my battery monitor here, and you can see 20 amps, 14.5 volts, 291 watts, so pretty close to 300 watts for the heating pads in there. And disregard the 100% full. It's just because of the high uh, voltage there that's created. It's just tricking this kind of cheap battery monitor into thinking it's full. Okay, we're up to nine Celsius now. Pretty close. There we go. We've switched to ten, so it should start protection status there it just changed and now you can see the green light has come on and we're showing 58 amps so it still is actually uh, I think it's still putting some into the heating pads because this uh, particular charger I have will go up to 80 let's see Oh, there we go. Now we're getting the, the full 75.7 uh, .7 amps. So the heating pads inside the battery have turned off now. And uh, we're getting the full charge power. So, working as advertised. Well, I'm pretty happy with the performance of the battery so far. But I thought next I would uh, try to get the lid off this. It's fairly sealed. Is it's got IP65 uh, 
waterproof protection, which means you can probably, you know, take a hose or a hard rain, it wouldn't be a problem. You wouldn't want to submerge it though. See if I can get that lid off. Really interested in seeing how they did this particular post because recently it's it's been published online. I've seen a few videos about problems with the uh, Battleborn batteries that have the same post style, and inside they're getting loose connections and causing overheating of posts. So this was curious to see how they've done their post design on this battery. So let's see if I can get this lid off. A lot of times they're just glued on the edge here. Okay, after a lot of uh, careful uh, sawing with my multi-tool here, this carefully went along the edge. It's kind of glued together, but I noticed this post is definitely a different design. They have these little caps, and you can see it goes down into kind of an L-shaped bracket, and there's a nut right in there. I'm going to have to take off to get the lid off, but yeah. Definitely not the same design. I think this design is better. There's a closer look for you. Bracket there, nut through it. I'll do a mounting plate down there. So I'll pull the other side off and hopefully be able to get the lid off now. Okay, here we go. So there's the power button there. And then the two uh, data ports. And this is the valve to let air out if you get air inside here because it is quite sealed. You can see where it was glued all the way along the edge here. Which I don't particularly like if you ever need to service anything. It's a big hassle to get it apart, obviously. You end up destroying your battery, possibly, or damaging something. Looks like there's a lot of space between there, though, and the cells, but you could always hurt the cells. It would be nice if they built this battery with a way to get the lid off. Maybe use a, a rubber O-ring for sealing so that it can be serviced. Uh, some battery companies do that, usually the metal case batteries, but I have had plastic case batteries, the SFK battery that I reviewed, you could get it off and service everything inside quite easily. Anyway, take this metal plate off and see if we can take a look at the lithium cells they're using. Didn't mention this looks to be the heating pad wiring. So it comes across here as nice protective uh, sheathing and then it's been zip tied against there. And you can see down here, you can see some heating pads in between there. Okay, that just unbolts from the top there. Look at these huge cells. Wow. These are large. But Everything looks very well put together here. Looks like there's some screws down below so I can get this pack out. And then here we have the BMS board. Wow. Let me see if I can get the case off of this to get a better look at the cells. Okay, a couple bolts down below and can't just slid out sideways. They melt quite easily. Have a look at the BMS here. These are the terminals at each end. Most like that is kind of welded onto the board or soldered. Coming through the battery there. This is an interesting device here. I haven't seen one of these, but it says 200 amps, 80 volt, and down here 145 Celsius. So it's some type of a resettable fuse or breaker. So I guess if you get over uh, amperage or temperature or voltage it'll open up but it looks like maybe it'll reset itself. I'm not sure. I'll have to look up that number and see what it is. I've never seen one of those before. Anyway, interesting. Let's see if 
I can peel off one side. I'd like to see if there's any numbers on the cells themselves. Look at the heating pad. Just glued onto the side of the cells here. So there was an insulator in there. It's kind of been taped down, kind of a glue. Anyway, I got it off. Flip the BMS upside down there for you. BMS seems to have a nice coating on it, weather protection coating, which is a good touch. You see that a lot in automobiles and marine applications. And then we have, looks like the balancing leads go into this board. Everything is kind of welded, all the cells there. Eh, it's quite the nice design. Well, that's as far as I'm going to go, because to really get much further, I'm going to end up destroying these nice connections just to get this off to try to see a code for the cells, but I don't want to destroy the battery. Anyway, overall, she looks like a pretty slick design. My only qualm with it would be if it would be nice if this was able to have the lid come off and get into it a little easier for servicing. I kind of know what why they do it. They don't want end customers really messing with it, but uh, shipping these heavy batteries around is very expensive and it's a lithium thing. So it'd be, and when you ship a lithium, there's a whole bunch more complexity to shipping lithium. So it'd be nice if you could take it to some type of service center locally, you know, a technician or something, especially if it's just one of these, you know, bolts coming loose somewhere or a wiring cable that's kind of come loose. Okay, back in business. I just wrapped some Gorilla Tape around the seam on the lid and then the front two uh, lugs keep it pretty tight. So, it seems to be charging and discharging fine. Did a few quick tests and I'll continue uh, testing it. Maybe come back with a longer term review in a few months. Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV and boat. Cheers everyone.